everybody, it's Matthew Lee with the Tao of Kung Fu, and I'm finding all of these amazing parks that are uh, kind of tucked away all over here in San Francisco. This one's actually not tucked, it's perched. I'm up on top of a hill above the uh, mission, and uh, up in Diamond Heights actually, even though it's a little chilly here in the beginning of August, which most of my friends would be amazed out in Las Vegas. It's like um, barely 60 today and windy, so it's kind of chilly. And earlier, all the fog was moving in, which it's coming back in and it burned off, but now it's gorgeous. So I was driving around and I realized I have all my camera stuff with me. I found this park and it's got a great view, so I decided to shoot a video. And today I've got something really special with me, my chain whip. This baby is about uh, easily 10 years old, maybe 12. Maybe long, maybe older than that, actually. Probably we're talking 15 years old. And, of course, the chain whip is considered a soft weapon. Even though this one is steel, the softness is referring to it's not rigid. It's got the joints in it. So anything that's like a rope jointed weapon has got, uh, is, it fits in the soft weapon category. So a sword would be a hard weapon, a staff would be a hard weapon, um, a metal bar or a baseball bat would be a hard weapon, anything with a joint in it like um, nunchaku, three sectional staff, the chain whip, uh, there's like a flail, uh, rope darts, meteor hammers, all of that type of stuff is going to be considered a soft weapon. And so general rule of thumb is that hard weapons go to soft areas of the body. Like if I do a hard weapon, like a sword, to the head, it will hurt me, but it's going to ding and not do a ton of damage. And if you do a sword, though, to a soft area of the body, like the abdomen or the neck, it's going to do a lot of damage, maximum damage. Where the soft weapons go to hard areas, if you shoot this into a stomach, it's just going to hurt the person, but it's not really going to do a lot of damage. Where if you shoot that into the rib or into the temple, it's going to do maximum damage. So hard weapons typically go to soft parts of the body, and soft weapons go to hard areas of the body. The biggest thing with something like the soft weapons, because they are a little bit more advanced to be training with, is to make sure, number one, that safety is involved. So you got to make sure that you are inspecting that all of the links are really healthy and there aren't any breaks anywhere and that all of the joints are intact. That's the most important thing. The handle's really solid and that it fits you. Um, if it doesn't fit you, you might have to have somebody help you take a link out or something like that if it's too long. It's better for it to be a little too short, but even that's going to cause problems when you start wrapping it around your body. It's a really good idea to, when you're beginning to pad the tip so that if it does come around and hit you, you're not catching steel on the face. And, um, and then I also tell people it's a great idea to wear a mouth guard and possibly a groin protector. And if you're really, really kind of uncoordinated and klutzy with it at first, it's probably a good idea to put on some elbow pads and maybe some knee pads or shin pads or something like that. Wear shoes when you're training with it. And don't try stuff, try the basics and get good with those first. Don't try things out of your league with advanced material, but especially when you're talking uh, advanced weapon, you want to make sure that you're going nice and slow to start off with, doing the basic techniques first, getting good at those, feeling comfortable with it, building your confidence with the weapon, and then you start into the more intermediate and advanced techniques with that weapon so that you've got that confidence flowing through into it. You don't want to break your confidence and, and then the weapon will end up with a bad uh, rep because um, a bad rap because you feel like it's uncontrollable when it's actually you. So make sure you go into it slow and, um, and work it really well. The grip is really important with this weapon. So just like with a baseball bat or anything like that, you keep the 
wrist straight. You don't do any of like this type of stuff with it. You keep the wrist solid so that as you're swinging this around that it's only moving just a little bit but no big action like that. That's one of the biggest reasons people will hit themselves with nunchaku or hit themselves with the chain whip or the three sectional staff is instead of swinging it around this way where the wrist stays pretty solid they start doing all this stuff and it makes that totally uncontrollable and crazy so you have to be really careful with it as far as techniques go with this a lot of people make a mistake because they think of it like a jump rope where your mind really has to be on the with the end of it just like you have to be timing the jump rope but it's not like a jump rope where when the rope comes down, the body goes up. It's exactly the opposite. You want to have the mind on the tip of the, of the whip, but when the whip is going up, when the tip is going up, the body's going up as well. And when it's returning down, the body's returning down. So that way, it can keep one fluid motion and not be sped up. If I do the opposite, as it goes down and I go up, it's going to accelerate it and make it go faster, which makes it more uncontrollable for a beginner. So you want to be mirroring the tip with your body weight, and that's a major thing. It ties your core into the weapon, and it helps you get sensitivity with where the tip is, and then you can really get a good control of it. Just like when I talk about fa ching or anything like that, when you're talking about power generation, it all comes from the core. And this is one reason why we train the chain whip. It's not a very uh, viable weapon to use in combat today, hand to hand or anything. But uh, it gives you training and it builds that power from the core. When you're training it correctly, it'll give you that focus and build that power from the core. And so it will help you develop sensitivity and it will help with that connection to the dantian area and the waist and and uh, give you that weight shift that whole body movement that's going to help develop really stunning power keeping your mind focused on the tip of the whip is going to give you uh, that mind expansion so like the meditation and things like that will help uh, when you're doing that kind of concentration it will really help tie in that focus that you need when you're doing this. Now the biggest thing with this is when it's this long, if you take this swinging and you cut it in half, but don't change the motion, don't change the fluidity, it's gonna double the acceleration. So that's the diameter. And if you cut that in half, but keep the motion going forward, it's going to accelerate it. So that's a little circular acceleration going from a big circle to a little circle and that's how the whip shoots out and builds momentum so you have to remember as you're doing all of this uh, these techniques you don't accelerate the whip you just place yourself uh, body parts whether it's elbows or shoulders or your back or your neck or your foot or your knee or whatever in the whip and where you place it in the whip is going to accelerate it so if you cut the whip in half, it's going to double the acceleration. If you go down to the bottom third, it's going to even make it faster. So if you stay, if you cut the whip as it's swinging just right here at the handle, it's going to be slow. But if you cut it down here, it's going to make it go fast. So as you're doing your basic techniques, you want to really make sure you're coming up close to the handle when you're doing things like your arm changes and doing all of that type of stuff. A couple of basic things for you to practice first is just a nice forward spin. Your empty hand should be up just like a boxing guard because you're gonna be against an opponent anyways or you wanna imagine one. So you want this guard up so that anything coming in you can block. You can also strike with this and notice the shoulders dropped, the elbows in towards the ribs, the wrist is tight, and my weight is going with the whip. Even though it's just a little up and a little down, 
a little forward and a little back. My Dantian is doing basically the same circle that's happening right here at the handle. And then our first technique, I'll go slow, is gonna be coming under the arm. So just tucking it under the arm, like you would maybe a pair of nunchuck boots. So again, that's gonna be just a direction change. So all my weight is doing is switching and going to the left. And I'm bringing it under the arm and turning just like that. Now this time, I'm gonna put my elbow in the way and go over the arm and bring it back. So it cuts it a little further up and it makes it speed up a little bit more, but because my weight is going with it, I just turn and it moves it out of my way so it doesn't come around and hit me. So it's under and turn and then it's over the arm and turn. So I call these under over changes, meaning direction change. This is my forward spin. And then from here it goes under the arm and turns and this is a reverse spin coming upward. So reverse of the forward spin. And then it goes here. So once you get really used to the whip, those are the first couple techniques I want you to try out. And then we're gonna move into some really fun stuff where we start playing around with things like the leg coming in and out. We're gonna be coming around the back. We're gonna be coming around the neck. We're going to be coming on the opposite arm and doing things like shoots and having all sorts of fun with the whip. It's one of my favorite weapons and you totally get a lot out of it by training it. So have fun with that portion. Practice the basics a whole lot. That forward spin and the reverse spin are super important to be really confident with. Go slow, wear your mouthpiece so you keep all your teeth. You want that you want to be that uh, excellent athletic chain whipping uh, money maker that uh, endorsements will just be flowing in from. So uh, you want all your teeth and um, best of luck with training.